There are several types of characters, considered the strongest. The first one is the Deus Ex Machina character. The second is the character acclaimed as the strongest, whose development you closely follow. The third type is the character that is so overpowering that every appearance necessitates nerfing to maintain the story's integrity. For instance, when discussing Deus Ex Machina, it would be remiss not to mention Giordano Giovanna, and I know I'm gonna piss off a lot of people, but hear me out. What exactly is a deus ex machina? This term originates from Greek theater, denoting a play's abrupt and implausible resolution. In narrative terms, it perfectly encapsulates the situation with a Giorno, or more precisely, gold experience requiem. The arrow suddenly becomes a panacea, ensuring a happy ending. What would have been the bleak outcome? The Diablo's seemingly invincible reign of terror? But don't you find it strange that out of the blue, an arrow appears introduced by Polar from a previous part? Declaring it the ultimate solution against the Avalu, Giordano acquires the arrow, gaining powers perfectly countering the Avalus. It leaves you pondering, something doesn't sit right, and you're not wrong for thinking that, because Araki chose the worst possible way to resolve the Avalu's threat, with Giordano essentially pulling power out of his ass. To put it mildly, it's an instance of narrative laziness. When Polnareff appears, is as if to say that Jotaro and Polnareff search the world for these arrows and look what fortune brings, this one is the ultimate containing unimaginable power, using the strongest character as a deus ex machina, a last minute fix for all troubles, undermines the significance of the trouble in the first place and reduces them to a feeble plot device. The second and third types of strongest characters are, in a sense, almost opposites. The second type is the character acclaimed as the strongest, backed by feats that substantiate his reputation. The third type is the character perceived as the strongest, but lacks visible feats to prove it outright. However, you intuitively grasp their immense strength conveyed not through explicit statements, but through their actions. These roles are embodied by Gojo and Sukuna from Jujutsu Kaisen. Starting with Gochu, he's heralded as the strongest character in JJK. Right from his introduction, he stands as the pinnacle sorcerer of the modern era, and his prowess is palpable every time he enters the scene. Possessing formidable abilities, he effortlessly handles any challenge, yet he has never displayed his full potential until now, of course. However, what really captivates me is the narrative woven around Gojo's unparalleled strength rather than just his status as the strongest. Now, talking about Sukura, as previously mentioned, his claim to being the strongest lacks concrete feats. He is revered as the king of curses, yet these feats remain unseen, and he consistently faces opponents weaker than himself. Each appearance seems orchestrated with a plot-driven resolution. In storytelling, the principle of show don't tell is crucial, emphasizing the need to demonstrate rather than merely assert. In this regard, JJK's handling of Sukuna may fall short, as his confrontation Presentations often involve weaker folks, exaggerating the power gap, and when challenged by formidable opponents, Sukuna's sudden power escalation can feel contrived, and this discrepancy lies more with JJK's narrative choices than the character's inherent qualities. Nevertheless, while characters like Satoru Gochu represent the second type, they embody what I consider the most compelling approach. Despite Gochu's immense strength, he isn't a convenient plot device to resolve every story conflict. In fact, a deeper analysis of Jujutsu Kaisen reveals that Gojo himself catalyzed many of the series' conflicts simply by existing. His presence disrupts the world in profound and unforeseen ways, a thematic parallel to Spider-Man's struggles. Even in victory, Gojo often experiences losses, such as his conflicts with Toji and Hanami, where the costs are significant. This nuance underscores that Gojo's strength isn't just about his abilities, but also the immense responsibilities and burden he bears. From the moment of his birth, he carries the weight of being the strongest, not merely as a solution to problems or an unstoppable force, but as a complex figure where even triumph comes at a cost. And delving further into Sukuna's archetype of the strongest character, I find it among the most poorly developed. Even if executed masterfully, audiences often perceive it as a contrived plot device to establish his supremacy. That's truly disheartening because even with meticulous development, which I believe JJK failed to achieve, viewers and readers may still view it as simply augmenting the character's strength from thin air. This type of character tends to suffer from consistency issues in the narrative. 
Moving to the fourth type, the most common one we find in stories, is the strongest character whose existence is pivotal to the universe. You might ponder, what difference would it make to the story if this character were absent? When present as the strongest, they often face defeat because the plot demands it. If they aren't the protagonist, their defeat can amplify the hero's triumph. They effortlessly solve all problems without breaking a sweat. I can't think of a better character to exemplify this than Superman. If you're familiar with Superman, you understand precisely what I'm referring to. He reigns as the strongest character in the DC universe, possessing a litany of powers, multiple types of vision, laser eyes, invincibility and more. His weakness is a green rock, a kryptonite that everyone seems to have. Whether it's the rich bald guy, the wealthy bad guy or Doomsday, they all seem to have an answer for Superman's power. It's frustrating because his weakness was supposed to be rare, but now everyone has a piece of it that can weaken him. Why is it simply impossible for us to see this guy being the strongest since that's what he is? Well, because of something called plot. We end up arguing like crazy on the internet to figure out if Goku is stronger than Saitama, if Naruto could beat Goku, if Goku this or that. Stanley once said the following phrase, the power scale doesn't matter, what decides who wins is the writer. And that's a fact, because it doesn't matter if Superman is Superman, if when he faces Batman, Batman has kryptonite and Superman becomes just a man and gets beaten up because that's what the writer wants. So for me, this last type is the worst of all. It is more irritating than the deus ex machina really because it's like, okay, here's the strongest character, look how incredible he is, and then someone shows up with a rock, rubs it in his face, falls to his knees and gets trashed. If this guy is supposed to be the strongest, why does he have a weakness? That's something I personally will never be able to understand, he has to rely on the plot because on Honestly, without a plot, Superman's a god. That's what he is. So they made his weakness a rock. In the comics, it was a rare thing, but nowadays, it's not anymore. Anyone can have kryptonite, so much so that in the latest comics, they are even trying to remove this weakness. It undermines the character too much. Just like the Martian Manhunter from DC, he has a billion powers, can basically do everything, and his weakness is fire. Batman just has to light a match. Imagine a superhero where if you heat up a meal on the stove, you weaken him. That's how easy it is to defeat the guy. How can his weakness be something so absurd, it frustrates me a lot. It's a plot device so that in the end, the character is not stronger than the creator, because they have to create crisis to challenge the character. How will Superman die if he has no weakness? Then they will have to pull a deus ex machina out of nowhere to kill Superman. You can't believe that he is the strongest because at every moment, the plot is there proving that even though he is the strongest, look, Alfred can beat him. Don't make it something like he's the strongest, but every time he needs to be the strongest, he simply isn't and can be. So that's the video for today guys. If you enjoyed it, leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And you can always help me by simply watching another video after this one. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.